praise the Lord. He's worthy. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. fears. Truly God is worthy to deliver. He's faithful to hear you cry. Every time you call on his great name, he will deliver. He will bring you through victoriously. That's how mighty he is. All you got to do is trust him. Believe in his word and know that God never fails. He never abandoned you, nor will he turn his back on you. We are the children of the most high God, and God is faithful to sanctify us by his Holy Spirit about you today, but I stand in awe of his majesty. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. From the rising of the sun to going down the same, his name is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly of all we can ask or think according to his power that works in us. You believe that today. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. King Jesus, you reign forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Well, praise the Lord. We're going to go ahead and get started tonight. I haven't seen no one come on yet, but I always start on time anyway. Because I don't want to prolong the time. Someone will hear this lesson later on. And I pray it be a blessing and enrichment to your spirit and to your soul. The Lord brings changes in your life as he does in my own life. We all are going through some struggles and trials and tests in our lives and only God has the power to deliver. He has the power to redeem our lives from the curse of law, sin, and death. And all we got to do is keep trusting in his word. His word tells us, Blessed are the man that trust in the Lord and walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. Amen, amen. We're going to go into a word of prayer. Then we're going to get into our lesson tonight. Tonight we're going to pick up where we started off talking about the uh, word terminologies. The word is just a terminology. I tell you, God is doing something great in, in these lessons each week as we trust in him. I don't know about you, but I really feel the spirit of God moving in my life every day to perfect me, to make me better. 
in spite of the struggles, the habits, the mistakes we make in life, God is not counting you out. His mercies is new every morning. His compassion does not cease. Great is his faithfulness. Amen. Amen. So let's go into a word of prayer. So gracious God, our Father, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity, oh God, to share your word tonight. Just a word about terminology. Just a word about terminology from the book, Father God, breaking the threefold demonic cord in our lives. We ask God that you help us to stand fast in the liberty of Christ made us free. Let this word come forth with power and authority, oh God, to convict, to reprove, to correct, to change all of our lives for the better. Forgive us for our sins, knowing and unknowing, God, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Have your God-like way in our lives, oh God. Let the Holy Spirit purge and perfect our hearts, oh God. That we have no sin issue to hinder us from receiving your word that's able to save our souls and change our lives. And I thank you. The healing will flow from the word tonight, Father God. The manifestation of your glory be revealed to your heart of your people to help provoke, to challenge, to encourage, and edify them to walk in the fullness of who you are, Father God, that your glory will be displayed through their lives. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Each week I always start off with a devotion from the book Jesus Calling. So tonight I want to I'll read one for our cover tent that said, Trust me enough to let things happen without striving to predict or control them. Relax and refresh yourself in the light of my everlasting love. My love light never dims, yet you are often unaware of my radiant presence. When you protect yourself in the future, rehearsing what you would do or say, you are seeking to be self-sufficient, to be adequate without my help. This is a subtle sin, so common that it usually slips by unnoticed. The alternative is to live fully in the presence depending on each moment that's in me rather than fearing the inadequacy. Rejoice in my abundant supply. Train your mind to seek my help continually. Even when you feel competent to handle something by yourself. Don't divide your life into things you cannot do yourself and things that require my help. Instead, learn to rely on me in every situation. This discipline will enable you to enjoy life more and to face each day confidently. This is so beautiful. Praise the Lord for this word tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that in, incites you to keep on relying on God instead of trying to fix your own situation by yourself without the without God's presence. Because I found out you can't do it on your own. Only God has the power to give you the strength to overcome every obstacle, trial, and test in your life. He gives you the power to keep standing on His Word in spite of what goes on in your life, remember that you are able to overcome any struggle only when you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue what we left off last week about just a word about terminology. We all defined last week how the word echo, it's a word that, that talks about Satan's position, how he wants to control your mind and control your life, but you have to make a decision in yourself. 
that I'm not going to be victimized by the enemy, but I'm going to allow myself to be subjected to the word of God, that the word would bring change in my life. Amen. You have the power to do so only when you trust in God. Once we recognize the principalities and powers and the rules of darkness and all these wickedness in high places and we identify what's going on, then we have the power to strip the enemy of his power in our life. But the enemy only has the ability to control what you give him power to control in your life. Amen? So our struggles is not against flesh and blood, but against powers of this dark world, against, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. This translation uses the general term powers and spiritual forces to describe Satan's organizational structure. We talked about this last week, how Satan has a structure. And in his structure, it's a mind-binding spirit that controls your life. But you have to make a decision in yourself that I'm not going to be victimized by the enemy no matter how he comes against me, but I'm going to stand on the word of God. I'm going to keep allowing the word of God to use me to, to display God's glory, to allow the power of God to break the back of the enemy off my life, to set me free from the inside out. You cannot be free until you make a decision within yourself that you want to be free. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning verse 3. For though we war in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing those thoughts into obedience to captivity into captivity. Let me read this again. Excuse me. It says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, having in readiness. To revenge our disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. And that's what God wants us to recognize that you have the power to overcome the enemy's influences, his mind, mind, and spirit only when you walk in obedience to the Word of God yourself. Without obedience, you're going to find yourself always being victimized by the enemy, always struggling, overcome, and never rise to the full potential, the power that God has placed in your life to achieve. So we got to get to the place in ourselves. We acknowledge that these forces of evil that comes against you, only are operational when you are walking in rebellion, stubbornness, lack of daisy, not prayed up, not consecrated, not spending time in the word of God. That's when the enemy comes against you to destroy you. He only has the power to stop you in your tracks when you are blindly going through life, not seeking the face of God. If you don't seek the face of God, you're giving the enemy the access, the permission to come into your life. And every time you do that, you allow the enemy to strip you of your power and your authority. He cannot overcome your authority when you're walking with the full armor of God to stand against the wiles of the devil. That's the only way you can overcome the enemy in this life. And I'm not talking about the physical life. It's the spiritual life. Because once you get the spiritual life in order, the physical life follows suit. So in order to bring the flesh to subjection to the Lord Jesus Christ, you got to study your word. You got to meditate on that word. You got to eat the scroll, get the word inside of you, that the word will make an impact in your life to stop the enemy in his track. If you don't get into the word, the word cannot have any power in your life to overcome anything the enemy brings against you. 
For the only way the enemy can be defeated, just like Jesus in the wilderness, he quoted the word that man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. When you get your priorities in order and you recognize that my greatest defense against the enemy is the word of God, then I can defeat the enemy and his cohorts that come against me with the word of God. Amen. Let's move a little further. Last week we talked about, at this point, I must pause and lay two theological ground rules concerning the proper applications and understanding of each word. Principalities, powers, demons, forces of evil and spiritual wickedness. So we talked about those things like well, you want to get the terminology, get an understanding better, get, get the lesson last week. Go back to the lesson last week and, and allow it to get into your spirit. One point we, we, we really stood out the most is how Satan is not the original but a continual copycat of all that God establishes. He mimics what God does in your life. He even will even manipulate blessings in your life to look like God. When all the time the underlying, the underlying uh, influence and power is him that's blessing you. But it's only temporary. Anything Satan does, you're going to find out it's a temporary thing he does in your life. Because when God bless you, he said you can't be cursed. When the enemy bless you, you can be cursed again. You can fall back into the same pit of despair, back in the same old strongholds, the bad habits, the struggles, all those things that once held you in captivity, the enemy uses as baits. Because he wants to get you back into that place of captivity to a spiritual prison where you have a demonic, stronghold, spiritual lockdown in your life to keep you from moving forward to your destiny. He don't want you to achieve your destiny. He has his own structure of organized crime against God and his church. We talked about this last week. Satan has a whole organization. Principalities, powers, rules of darkness, spiritual weakness, high places. It starts with the, the head all the way down through the least member of his structure. Because he knows if I can keep you in a place of bondage, then these organizational demonic forces can have the power to operate in your life to prevent you from walking in the anointing, fulfilling the call on your life, allowing the Lord God himself to exalt you in his presence. If he can keep you defeated, he can keep you grounded in a pitfall of darkness where you never rise above until he can assassinate you. Kill, steal, and destroy, the word says. But God says through Jesus Christ, he can give his life and that more abundantly. You cannot get life more abundantly if you continue to walk in darkness, even straddle the fence. Because God says a lukewarm Christian, he'll spew you out of his mouth. So you got to make up your mind, make a decision. He is truly the evil one. When you understand who Satan is, what he does, and how he operates in your life, do you learn how to depend on God to defeat him? Amen? Move a little further. We're going, going to get to our lesson tonight. The devilish forces of which I'm writing are not, not garden variety demons, but possibly principalities and territorial rulers that affect us adversely. My God, my God. That's something when you think about it. Because both corporately and individually, we talked about this last week, and this is really a good point that God has showed me is that what Satan's MO is, is to take control of the whole region of God. 
his whole group of people, body of Christ, if I can get control of the whole vast majority of the body of Christ, I can affect them individually. That's what I talked about last week. He wants the region and he wants the colonies. Because in a region, there are colonies. And those colonies are set up in different places throughout the region. And he knows if I can get a hold to the entire region, I can control the colony, I can control individuals to destroy your life. One person at a time. One bad apple will spoil the whole bunch. How many times have you heard that growing up from your parents that one bad seed can corrupt the whole thing? Just like a banana. You buy a batch of bananas and you get that batch of bananas and one banana is rotting on the inside. But because it's still connected to the, the vine or, or the other bananas that are connected to it, it eventually starts to decay the other bananas as well. Just like apples. You've got a bunch of apples. And one apple is rotted. And that one apple is connected to other apples. Sitting next to other apples. The mold and decay of that one bad apple. Begins to spread upon the other apples. For you know a whole batch is rotted. No good. The same way in the spirit realm. The enemy knows if I can get one bad individual. To corrupt that's in the body of Christ. I can cause them to gossip, become backbiters, backstabbers, haters, and spread mess throughout the body of Christ to corrupt the whole church. And that's what enemy does because he knows if we're not praying to cover our leadership, cover one another, we're defenseless against the threefold demonic core that will come into the body of Christ to destroy it. You got to be prayed up. You got to spend time in the presence of God. You got to meditate on the word of God. As it says, day and night, keep the word in your heart, keep it in your mouth. Don't let it depart from you. When God gave Moses instruction, he told them to write the word on their forehead. So everywhere you went, people knew you were a servant of God because they had the word written on their forehead. And God wants us to keep that word before us. Your life is an outward expression of the word of God. When people see you, they see the word. But are you walking in the word? Are you walking in the word? Are you allowing the word to be revealed to you through your life, through your conversations? I can start off talking about a common conversation. But eventually, something about God always comes up. Because what's on the inside of you has been rooted and grounded. And anything that's rooted begins to sprout. So it's going to manifest itself no matter how much you try to hide it, keep it shut, shut in and keep it hidden. Something on the inside of you is going to come out. So you got to keep that word in you. What we presently experience every day is what I would consider subnormal. What we presently experience every day is what I would consider subnormal. We cannot rely totally on previous relations or revelations. Therefore, but are more compelled to press for fresh insight and godly instruction. You hear that? What you are dealing with presently is subnormal. But we can't rely on the subnormality of life. We got to have a desire to want something more from God. A fresh rhema. A fresh spoken word from God for your destiny, for your purpose, for your calling. God has compelled us every day to come into his presence by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit inside of each one of us 
It's drawing you every day. He's drawing, he's drawing, he's drawing. You're right back into the place of consecration to hear God speaking to you. But we get so distracted and distorted because we allow the flesh to dominate. Whatever we give the most influence and power to has the most control over your life. Think about it. If I spend most of my time throughout the day listening to the radio, watching television, don't pick up the Bible. If you got a tablet, don't read the Bible on the tablet. Don't find anything inspirational about God to put into me throughout the daily life journey that I'm going through. I slowly begin to wither. And what I mean by wither, you start dying. Just like a plant. When a plant is not being nurtured, not being pruned, not being watered, that plant begins to wither because the soil becomes so dry, it becomes corrupt. And the plant from the root all the way up begins to dry out until it turns brown and fall off. So it just dies. Your spirit man the same way. Jesus told the parable about a sower who went forth to sow some seeds. So some fell on good ground, some fell on stony ground, some fell on the rocks. He says some was on the surface. And he, he explained each one of those areas where the seeds were sown. But the one on the good ground stands out the most because he said, those are the ones who receive the word gracefully. And they live by that word. But the other three that he talks about, the enemy devours the word. He takes the word from you to kill you from your ambitions, to stop you from walking in your purpose. And he knows if I can distract you, I can put blinders on your eyes where you no longer want to have a desire to follow God, but appease your flesh. That's a sad condition to be in. We got to pay attention, people. We got to pay attention. Allow the Holy Spirit to be the guide in your everyday journey. And when you allow the Spirit of God to have an influence in your life, the enemy cannot stop you. When Jesus addressed the church at Thyatira, we talked about Pergamos last week, how he said they were so wicked and sinful, he wanted them to repent, but they wouldn't repent. Now he's talking about the church at Thyatira. He rebuked them for tolerating, check this out, Jezebel. Witchcraft. Jezebel represents witchcraft. And Jesus rebuked them for tolerating witchcraft, those demonic influences in the church, to go against God's truth and his gospel. He was not speaking about the Old Testament queen who had ruled in Israel. Centuries earlier, she was already dead. But I believe he was referring to an evil influence with the same characteristics as the Jezebel who seduced Israel to worship idols. Ain't that something? The same demonic influence of Jezebel is the same spirit that's operating in the church today. Because a lot of people follow the same characteristics of Jezebel in their spirits. Because the mindset has not been transformed. You went through the motions of salvation, receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but in your heart you were still separate and alienated from Christ. And the Lord is saying tonight it's time to come back Come back to Jesus. Allow the Spirit of God to change you. 
When you allow God's word to get in your heart, you stop the enemy, the power of Jezebel spirit from controlling your life, from seducing others to turn away from Jesus Christ. Just like she manipulated the children of Israel to follow idols. The same spirit are in some leaders in the church. Many people have itemized their pastors, their bishops, their apostles, and put them in a position as God in their life. So if they don't give them instructions what to do in their lives, they have no strength to do anything else for themselves. Because what my pastor said, my apostle said, my bishop said, that's gospel. Even if they're walking in rebellion against God's word. Because you're following them and they manipulate and seduce you with the enticing words. It prevents you from having a mind of your own. This is deep. This is deep tonight, y'all. Jezebel was a murderer and an idolater and a seducer. And Jesus was addressing a demonic force operating in Thyatira, characterized by the same nature. I considered Jezebel's spirit a principality since it had found an entrance to the entire city. Ain't that something? That spirit was so powerful. It controlled a whole city. Israel was a nation. And that spirit manipulated and controlled them to turn away from God to follow false gods. The same way it is in a city if the people of God don't rise up, get back to place, and seek the face of God, pray for their cities, pray for their states, pray for their nation, their country, the same spirit is going to control the entire region, the whole nation, the whole country will be controlled by the Jezebel spirit. And it says, found its interest into an entire city and into individuals who live there. When Jezebel finds an interest into our personal lives, listen to this. When Jezebel finds an interest into our personal lives, by contrast, we are basically dealing with one or more demons on the direction of Jezebel. You're dealing with more than one demonic force by the influence of Jezebel. So doing the spiritual warfare on an individual basis, we might battle against control, manipulation, seductive thoughts, fear, anxiety. All symptoms of Jezebel type attacks. But this evil power can also take over a large region and territories. Wasn't I just talking about that? An attempt to seduce God's people into apostasy and idolatry. That apostasy is heresies, false doctrine, following after idols. More on the characteristics of Jezebel and her idols would, would be later. According to the Vine Complete Expository Dictionary of the Old and New Testament word, the word principality is from a Greek word, archi, and translates as to begin, to be the first, the origin, and having at first spoken. That's deep. That's deep. It further translates as ruler or chief. One can easily conclude that a principality is a ruler over a territory or region. Rulers rule over lands and territories, just as kings have kingdoms. The Greek word archi, interestingly, is linked to our English word architect. You hear that? 
Archie is linked to the word architect. And architect is the first one who actually has a vision of something to build and then lays out a plan and a blueprint to follow. A blueprint to follow. Satan has his own delicate authorities, architects, in the spiritual realm who first lays out visions of destruction and then gather demons to implement their plan. That's deep. That's deep there. And that's what the enemy does. Remember a few weeks ago I talked about the death structure? A death structure cannot be built until someone has a vision that's influenced by demonic power of the enemy to design a structure or a fortress or a castle in your life to entrap you. So if Satan used the power of Jezebel to manipulate and control God's people, he has architects to design and build up a death structure around them. Then he has demonic forces to fulfill the vision. Ain't that something? Just like God says, we have a vision. God has a vision for your life. Because I know the thoughts and plans I have for you is do you no harm if you expect it in. So he has a vision for you. He tells you right to vision, make it plain, all may see me run with it. If he tells us to do that, then guess what? The enemy has a vision. He has a vision for your destruction, for your demise to destroy you. And if you're not careful and not paying attention to the signs and God, the things God shows you as warning signals, enemy comes to your life and he brings the demonic forces to implement their plan in your life to destroy you. My husband and I have been in ministry for close to 20 years and have built custom homes for more than 25 years. In our years of building, not one architect has ever shown up on our job site. There were others who built on the job, but the architects had laid out the vision and allowed others to fulfill it. Ain't that something? Because an architect is one that draws. They have a vision that they can write down and display images, even on computers. They can put these demographics in order of how the building will be, the structure, what's going in the building, the different rooms, different closets, different restrooms different facilities in this room, in this building. They design all of that. But they're not the one that build it. They're just the visionary. You tell them what you want in your expansion process, project, excuse me. You tell them how you want your building to be designed. They get it in their mind on how to display it in paper form as well as digital form. And when they do this, they present it to you for your approval. And they tell you how much the cost is going to be. God sent his words to no, no man who started out to build never not neglect to count the cost. Because there's a cost to building. And then when you design, desire and design what you want to build, you got to count the cost of how much I'm going to have to use to put this into fruition to come to pass and then how much will I have left over for other things I can do for this facility. The enemy does the same thing. He counts the cost. He knows what it's going to cost you to follow him. He knows what it's going to be in your life to distract you, to bait you, to lead you away from the plan God has for your life. He knows exactly what to do to manipulate your mindset, to follow his regime and do just what he wants you to do. This is what 
I believe Satan and his principalities do as his vision to destroy the body of Christ is devised. <coughs> Excuse me. So we got to pay attention, people. We got to pay attention. All that I believe Jezebel is a principality. We are often battling with individual demons. Even though Jezebel, I mean Jezebel, excuse me, <clears throat> is a principality, she has other demonic forces that follows her order to implement her, her vision, her plan in your life. Jezebel is a ruler spirit and the demonic forces of Athalia and Delilah team up with her to oppose us. That's where we get the threefold demonic court. So you got Jezebel, who is the ruling spirit, Athaliah, her daughter, and you have Delilah, her granddaughter. All three are women. All three are influenced by the demonic forces. All three have power to control and manipulate. And if you're not paying attention, when these spirits begin to operate in your life, it's going to do just what the word says, kill, spirit, and destroy. It's going to stop you from walking in your full purpose and the plan God has for your life. Jezebel would, therefore, be an authority with the demonic forces of Athaliah and Delilah, co-laboring with her to carry out her strategy. My terminology, however, may not always be stated thus, but to be honest, I do not believe there are many absolute concernings the correct usage of the names of evil powers. <laughs> Scriptures is not clear on much more than there is in hierarchy. And that's that, that high position of demons, forces. So you got to pay attention, people. We got to wake up. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it tells them, be not conformed to this world, be transformed by renewing your mind. Right? So we got to get into place in our mindsets. We allow the word of God to change us. In 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, so there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will with the temptation, who will not suffer you to be tipped above you're able to bear, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. God will give you a way out of your situation only when you're seeking his faith and desire to be set free then the word of God can come forth with power and authority to liberate your mindset. You cannot be liberated from the power of the enemy until you recognize that this is a demonic force that has a destruction power to move in my life to stop me in my tracks. My God, my God, my God. So we got to let the Spirit of God Use us to walk in truth and righteousness. Amen. I'm looking for another scripture. I haven't found it, but I'll find it later. Uh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. One minute, people. God bless you. God bless you. Here it is, Proverbs 16 and 4. That's what I'm looking for. <clears throat> Proverbs 16 and 4. It says, The Lord works out everything to its proper end. 
even the wicked for a day of disaster. Isn't that something? A God knows already the end of your enemy. We all have enemies come against us. But God says, you know what? I already devised a plan to stop your enemy in his track. But all you got to do is trust me. And if you trust me, then the word is going to continue to lead you in victory. Your victory is attached to your obedience to the word of God. If you don't obey the word of God, how do you expect to overcome the enemy in your life? Your obedience is attached to following the divine order of God. And allow the word to change your thought life every day. Amen. So it's my opinion that all three beings <clears throat> are powerful force against forces that gain strongholds over our minds and emotions as well as our families, businesses, and churches. When we refer them to as principalities, forces, or evil spirits, it is less relevant than that their power must be pulled down and Satan dethroned. For the sake of this book, let's agree not to become sidetracked <clears throat> and debate certain terms or phrases used to explain Satan's hierarchy and power structure. Otherwise, we have given legalism the upper hand. You know what legalism is, right? <clears throat> That's following the law, being a governed by the law and not by the spirit of God and his word. Now let's continue to discover how evil powers and animating three Old Testament women Jezebel, Apollia, and Delilah seduces God's chosen are still affecting us adversely today. These three spirits have banded together are in control of your life if you're not letting God be in control. And it's still in operation today and produces legalism in the lives of God's people to make you want to follow out the rules and regulations instead of following out God's word. God's word does not operate through legalism. It operates through God's command of holiness and righteousness. When you allow the word of God to be in your heart, the word changes your life from the inside out. But it starts with the mindset. When God changed the mindset, then the enemy has no power to control you and stop you from walking in God's will. Amen. And let's see what this is. James 5.16. Let's go to James 5.16. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. We're going to close with this last verse. 1 Peter 5 and 8. It says, be alert, be sober of mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And that's what he wants to do, looking for someone to devour. That's what he wants to do. He wants to devour you. He wants to destroy your life. He's looking for someone who's vulnerable, who don't care about anything they do in life, just for their own fleshy desires to be fulfilled. Don't care about God, don't want to serve God, don't want to live for God, just don't care. And that's what the enemy looking for, someone in that position to stop you in your track. But I encourage you tonight, 
Let this word be rooted and grounded in your heart. Go back and listen to it again. It'll be on YouTube. There's a link on here, tagged on this this uh, on the comments page. And allow this word to open up your understanding. To see yourself the way God sees you victoriously. Because if you don't walk in the word, then you're going to walk according to the flesh. And the flesh will always lead you straight and lead you to the place of destruction. Amen. So I want to thank you tonight for tuning in to our lesson tonight. If this has been a blessing to you, sow some stars in this lesson tonight. Sow, sow some stars. Those stars add up to money to support the ministry. If it's really been a blessing to you, you can also sow a seed through Cash App. You know, or you can go on Giveify and sow into Redeem Faith Fellowship Church. So there are three avenues you can sow in to support the ministry. Amen. So I pray this really have given you an understanding, even make you think and challenge you, provoke you to examine your heart, see what's going on in your life and where you are lining up with the word of God. Because so many times we, we allow ourselves to get stuck in a dark place when God is trying to bring us out we find ourselves falling back into the pitfall of despair, depression, oppression, suppression. Doesn't matter what it is. People are defined by their conditions many times because they allow their mindset to just dwell on those bad things in their life, the, 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 the financial issues, the living arrangements, the relationships. There's all kinds of things in life to distract you. And that's part of the influence of the Jezebel spirit. It's to manipulate your mindset. To not see yourself the way God sees you walking in the freedom that God has for you. But I challenge you tonight. Get into your word. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Read the whole chapter. It's a good chapter. And you'll find out when Paul was doing the church, he'd bring in a word of rebuke and a word of correction. For many times, God has to rebuke us. That means chastise, correct, reprove. Because he loves us. If God didn't love you, he would not send forth his messengers to preach the gospel to help change your life and your destiny for the better. Amen. So we want to go into a word of prayer. So Father, I thank you for this lesson tonight. Pray that it, Father God, help reprove, correct, challenge, provoke, change us, draw us into your presence like never before, that you will be glorified. And I thank you for the victory in Christ Jesus. I thank you for what you have done, O oh God, this far in these lessons. That every day you're challenging us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of who you are. And so, God, you bring healing to those who need healing tonight, O oh God, deliver those who need deliverance. Let them see themselves victorious in Christ Jesus. Change our mindsets, change our hearts to be more like you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. If you pray, if you pray along with me for God to change, I want you to pray this simple prayer. You might be one that don't know Jesus, Lord and Savior tonight. The Lord says, for God so loved the world, he gave us only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but you have everlasting life. Would you pray this simple prayer with me? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins, knowing and unknowing. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Now be my Lord and Savior, and I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And you prayed that prayer. The whole host of heaven rejoiced over one sinner and made a decision to follow after Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen. I pray you all continue to have a blessed night. You got any questions or comments, you might inbox me. You can inbox me on my messenger. And I'll respond to your, your questions in a timely order. Don't forget to sow a seed into the ministry. If God bless you to sow a seed, don't be stingy. Be obedient to the Spirit of God. If God moves in your heart to sow a seed, sow a seed. So many times we hear God wooing our spirits to sow a seed, and we get rebellious, and we get stubborn, and, and, and feel like we don't have to do anything. 
But I found out in the word of God, and I'm a living witness, when you give, it'll come back to you. God will cause the wind of heaven to open up to rain down blessings on you even more. He calls people to bless you, even when you're not expecting a blessing. He calls other people to bless you anyway because of his love and his concern and his care for your well-being. Amen. You all have a great and a blessed and a prosperous night. Stay excited about Jesus. Then that God loves you. He cares about you. And so do I. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. And give you the peace you expect him to give. In Jesus' name, have a great night. <laughs>